Very good morning to you. Let's get more now on those plans for billions of pounds of investment in UK infrastructure. Well, as we've been hearing, the total investment that's described in the Treasury's National Infrastructure Plan comes to £375 billion. That's over the next 20 years. Now, the vast majority of that, around £309 billion, has already been announced. So it's not new money. But a large chunk of the new cash available is the £25 billion that's been pledged from six UK insurers, and that will be invested over the next five years. Now, it also sees the government double the target for uh, the sale of its corporates and financial assets. That goes up from £10 billion to £20 billion, and that would include the sale of the government's 40% stake in Eurostar, the cross-channel rail service. Now, the infrastructure projects planned range from rail extensions to new nuclear power stations, so plenty uh, for uh, developers to get their teeth into. Let's speak to Nick Bavistock. He's the Director General of the Institution of Civil Engineers. Uh, Nick, good morning to you. Um, so looking at these figures, it certainly seems it's a welcome boost for some of your members. Uh, good morning, yes, and thank you very much for the opportunity to, um, to talk. I, I don't think it's about our members. I think it's about society. I think it's about what UK needs in terms of its uh, national infrastructure. Um, on the face of it, these are very welcome announcements, and, and we welcome what we've seen. Clearly, the devil is in the detail. Uh, we haven't seen the detail yet. The Chief Secretary will be making the announcements in the institution later on today. Um, but we are broadly, broadly uh, welcoming what we've seen. Um, and, and as you rightly point out, not, not all of this is new money. We've seen some of the announcements in the summer. But I'm very interested in where the 25 billion of new money uh, might be invested, whether it, whether it would be invested in assets uh, or whether it's uh, in creating new infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, you say there the devil is in the detail. It's not the first time we've heard these announcements. And, and crucially, of course, in an attempt to bring down the deficit, a lot has been announced and then that's been scaled back. I mean, in your experience, how likely is it that these schemes we've seen announced today will actually go ahead? Do you know, I've, I've seen a, a sort of change in mindset from, from the government over the last year. Uh, I think the uh, bringing in of Paul Dighton into uh, the Treasury has provided new impetus. Uh, and I see a greater focus on delivery, and that's what we've been calling for for a number of years now. Um, clearly, it is now up to uh, the government to ensure that we get that delivery. But I think there has been a change of emphasis, and I think we should support what we're seeing. Um, having said that, you know, we need to understand what the context is. Uh, the UK has slipped this year from 24th to 28th in the World Economic Forum's infrastructure ratings, notwithstanding what the Chief Secretary said earlier on about the UK being a very good place to invest um, and and there has been a deficit in infrastructure investment over the last decades uh, and we do face an uphill challenge that said you know a lot of announcements today a lot of them focused around energy which is probably our number one priority um, the second biggest uh, benefactor is transport again something we've been calling for for some considerable time um, and if we can address some of the the um, delays in decision making if we can smooth through the delivery, then I think actually we should view this as an opportunity, uh, not as, a, not as a, a, a bad announcement or a good announcement. Okay, Nick, good to talk to you. It's Nick Baby Stott there, Director General at the Institution of Civil Engineers. And I just want to show you some market numbers because a third successive day of losses on US markets yesterday. 